I'm going to go over the three finger exercises that I teach and point out some things to be mindful of as far as right hand and left hand techniques goes. You want to start with finger exercise number one. This will get you started whether you're, especially if you're a beginner, but even if you've been playing for some time and you're really wanting to get control of your motor skills and move forward, these are really your calisthenics. One, two, three, four. I'm starting off on my first, second, third, fourth frets with my first, second, third, fourth fingers. And notice how I get as close to the fret as possible without being right on top of it. I want that fret to do the work for me. And to the best of my ability, I'm playing on the tips of my fingers. So having your fingers like this is, is gonna really be uh, difficult to maneuver. You can't play like that. You need to be on your fingertips roughly. And, in, and when you practice exercises like this, you really want to go for good form because you're not playing music, you're getting your motor skills together. So, you know, really focus on technique because when you go to play music, there's a lot of agility you're going to need. But for your finger exercise, you want to keep it really simple and straightforward and and program your motor skills with accuracy so one two three four if you're just beginning you definitely want to use all down picks if you've been playing a while and if you can do these with down picks flawlessly then begin doing alternating picks okay and you never want to break the chain. You don't want to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. It's easy to do that and not realize it. So that's why you want to go really slow and build this from the ground up properly. Speed is not important. Accuracy is important. If you place your focus on accuracy, speed will come. It, it may feel counterproductive because you want to run, but... Um, it's really important to practice for accuracy. If you're just starting out, you'll do all down picks. And look at my pinky, my fourth finger on my right hand. I have this anchored. Usually I'm holding on to my high E string, which is my first string down here on the bottom. And when I get close, I'll fall off and just let my finger touch the guitar. This is my guide and helps my right hand to learn how far all of these strings are. Also with my left hand, all four fingers are on the neck of the guitar before moving on to the next string. You don't want to go. You're not gaining any control. There's no point of reference, so. I put my first finger down, that grounds me. Also, see how I'm keeping the palm of my hand here? I typically rest my hand right here on the strings because uh, I need to be able to keep uh, strings quiet that I don't want to ring, especially when I play the electric guitar because if I just don't touch anything and just let the strings vibrate wide open, uh, if I have any, especially distortion on, any volume on my amp, this is just going to take off and make all kinds of noise and feedback. So I have to constantly be dampening. But even on the uh, acoustic guitar to you know not be plugged in it's not going to necessarily make any noise but as I play I'm going to be using a combination of my left and right hands to do all of the muting and they learn to dance together so you want to get comfortable one by having a relaxed right hand Then you slide your pinky up, and that's up in pitch, not up in direction because my guitar might be pointed up 
towards the ceiling or down towards the floor. So it's not in direction, it's in pitch. Up is moving towards the body of the guitar. Down is moving towards the headstock. So once you get to the fourth string, slide that pinky up one fret and come back. Four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Slide your first finger up. Okay. And you want to work your way all the way up to the 12th fret, and then you'll work your way back down. Alternating picks. You just want it to be real consistent. Now, a lot of times people will hold their pick too tight, and the and you'll and they'll make it parallel with the string. If you tilt it back just a little bit, kind of lock this thumb, and the majority of my movement is coming from my wrist. Because if I've got everything moving here, it's hard to program my motor skills. So I'll kind of, without being tense, I'll kind of lock things in. But I tilt this back. I have resistance that way. Let's move on to finger exercise number two. In this exercise, I'm going to use first finger as my anchor, then my third finger, second finger, fourth finger. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. One, three, two. Four. One, three, two four, slide up one fret, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one. Okay, now, again, get as close to the fret as you can with your left hand. Keep that first finger anchored as you move up, coming back. You can't do that, although you can keep that first finger there until you get your pinky in place on the next string. So I'll use alternating picking now. Okay, all the way up to the 12th fret and then work your way all the way back down. Once you get up to the 12th fret, then you just move down a fret. Okay.
Now for our last finger exercise, we're going to use first, fourth, second, third. Again, I'm keeping my first finger anchored, so I'll use down picks to get started. First, fourth, second, third, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three, one, four, two, three. Now I end with my third finger, so I'm going to slide that finger up a fret. And I'm going to come back exactly backwards. Three, two, four, one. 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 Slide my first finger up. One, four, two, three. Slide the third finger up, all the way up to the twelfth fret and back down. So with alternating picks, I've just opened up my metronome, and this is Pro Metronome. That's what the phone app is on my iPhone. And I've got it set to 70 beats per minute. And I've got a quarter note and four four times. So that means it's going to be one, two, three, four. There'll be four beats to a measure, and the quarter note gets one beat. So this is 70 beats per minute. And if you're starting out, you're going to want to play on each beat. And you really want to lock in. Now if you're doing alternating picking, you can probably keep it at 70 beats per minute, but this would be double time. So wherever you are, as far as be an absolute beginner or advanced student, you know, if I wanted to push this up to uh, 90 beats per minute. Now, if you're not an advanced player, you could play on every click. So you can use this metronome however you like. Um, but one thing that is extremely important, especially once you start getting a little bit of confidence and some, some uh, coordination and getting control of what you're doing, you want to start to create a pulse because just one, just like if I'm talking, if I never change my monotone, no one would really listen very long. Well, when we're playing, we want to, to really have a sense of time. We also want to be locked in to a metronome or to the time, to the drummer, to whatever drum loop that we have.
to talk about creating a pulse. Uh, I will put this at 70 beats per minute. That way, if you're not an advanced student, you can begin to use probably 70 beats per minute and do the double time um, once you have control of the finger exercises with down picks and shift to alternating picking. You could go from two, See, this would be playing on every single note or double time. But once you shift to double time, it becomes really important to do what I call creating a pulse. Now the GoPro's locked onto my headstock, but you can probably tell that there's some movement. I'm tapping my left foot da, 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 with each tick on the metronome. In my whole body, I'm feeling it in my whole body. It's critical to feel this. It's music. Okay? Creating a pulse whenever you're doing a rhythm exercise. So creating a pulse is critical. That's kind of the first step towards really uh, developing feel on your guitar. If you're a drummer, you really have to practice with a metronome. A lot of times guitar players don't want to, um, but it's really important to play to a metronome or to get some drum loops that you really like. Uh, I love to practice with drum loops. If you've got GarageBand on your phone or on your computer, and there's a million different apps, but to find, uh, you know, some just fun drum grooves to practice with, that's good too. So hopefully this really um, helps you to see the importance of accuracy, uh, of building things from the ground up, that speed is something that you really earn and and speed happens as a result of accuracy period you don't just try harder and harder and harder and harder to get faster you try well you place your focus on accuracy and speed comes fairly quickly but if you try to chase it you're going to be chasing it for a long time okay